Welcome to 5-Minute German Grammar. Thank you for watching. This presentation will introduce interrogative words in the accusative case. As we saw in a prior presentation, interrogative words demand a more detailed response. The interrogative word where inquires about the position of the subject. More detailed information is provided by the prepositional phrase, in the library. You may want to review that presentation before continuing with this one. We also learned that some interrogative words took different endings based on the case, gender, and number of the noun they modify, although I didn't go into detail about them. I will do that in this presentation. These interrogative words are wer, who, and welch, which. It is important to note that the endings for these interrogative words are like the dare word endings we have already studied. This slide shows these dare word endings using the demonstrative pronoun dies, this. The interrogative pronoun wer, who, always takes a masculine ending. The er ending here indicates that the pronoun is in the nominative case and therefore acting as the subject of the sentence. Wer ist das? Who is that? In this slide, the masculine en ending indicates that the interrogative pronoun is the direct object of the verb and therefore in the accusative case. Wen siehst du? Whom do you see? An interesting side note is that where or wir is Old English for an adult male human. Variations of this noun are common across many Germanic languages and help to explain why the interrogative pronoun wer takes masculine endings in modern German today. It also helps us understand the etymology of werewolf or der Werwolf in German, both of which could be translated as man-wolf. Although the interrogative pronoun wer is limited to masculine endings, welch takes the full range of endings based on the gender, case, and number of the noun it modifies. Here the masculine er ending indicates that the noun it modifies is in the nominative case and the subject to the sentence, welcher man ist das? Which man is that? And here the masculine en ending indicates that welchen man is the direct object of the verb and therefore in the accusative case. The feminine e ending here could be either nominative or accusative, but the presence of du a nominative personal pronoun suggests that welche Frau functions as the direct object of the verb and is therefore in the accusative case. And, like the prior slide, although the neuter es ending could be either nominative or accusative, the presence of du also shows that welches Auto must be in the accusative case. We do need to be a bit careful when distinguishing between feminine and plural endings. Although the E ending here could possibly be either feminine nominative or accusative, the noun ending EN and the presence of DU indicates that welche mention must be plural accusative and the direct object of the verb. Finally, it is important to remember that interrogative words always come in the first position of the sentence. Although welch generally is used in conjunction with a noun, as you see here, this noun phrase is still considered to be one unit and in the first position. The verb, of course, still comes in the second position. The five-minute German grammar series is produced by David Neville, Associate Professor of German. The video scripts and lecture slides are released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share-alike 4.0 international license. Don't be a square. Remix and share.